Hello, my name is Michael Petzold. I'm an infection control practitioner with my colleagues from the IPAC team, Linda Fittis and Brian Morales. Uh, we'll be demonstrating the procedure for donning and doffing personal protective equipment, or PPE, which is to be used with suspected or confirmed Ebola virus disease cases. Donning of PPE is done in a clean area outside of a designated negative pressure room for suspected or confirmed EVD cases. Donning and doffing is a two-person procedure the clinician who is donning and the other who will be observing and assisting. A checklist is to be used to ensure no steps are missed. The observer's sole responsibility is to ensure that PPE is being donned accurately and to monitor the clinician doffing the PPE for potential contamination. This procedure must be done before entering and exiting an EVD room. You will notice Linda, as observer, will carefully follow the checklist. You will also notice Brian is waiting for direction for both donning the PPE and more importantly taking it off. It's important to wait for direction because for your safety, the observer needs to ascertain no steps are missed and no contamination occurs, especially during the doffing process. So let's begin. Step 1. Prepare to don your PPE by removing all unnecessary items including lanyards, keys, pagers, and jewelry. These items will get in the way of proper donning and doffing and will also need to be disinfected if worn. Ensure that all hair is tied up. Fingernails must be trimmed not only because long fingernails provide great hiding places for organisms, but long fingernails may potentially puncture gloves compromising their protective ability. Complete step one by cleaning your hands with alcohol-based hand rub. Step two, put on fluid-resistant leg covers. These are fluid-resistant leg covers with the glossy part inside. At the bottom of the feet, there are directional arrows pointing forwards. Step 3, put on first set of nitrile gloves. These are the long green 12 inch gloves. These gloves are longer to provide extended coverage up the arm. You'll want to make sure these are pulled completely up the arm. Step four, put on coverall. The coverall has a zipper on the front. It also has an adhesive cover which will need to be pulled off later to stick the flap to the front of the coveralls. Coveralls are donned like a pair of pants with a zipper at the front. Even though you are donning in a clean area, try to ensure you have as little contact with the floor as possible in order to avoid contamination with other microorganisms. Zip the cover all about halfway up since you still have to don your facial PPEs.
Step five, put on fit tested N95 respirator and perform a seal check. You will need to make sure you have completed your N95 respirator fit testing within the past 24 months. If you have not done so, you will need to make an appointment with Occupational Health and Safety for your mask fit testing as soon as possible. To ensure a good seal, avoid pinching with your thumb and forefinger as they have unequal strength. For this reason, you may inadvertently create an opening at the top. Instead, firmly push from the top with opposing fingers of both hands and mold the mask to take the contour of your face. Now perform a seal test, first by blowing to simulate exhalation. You shouldn't feel any air escaping above, below, or to the side of your respirator. Also perform a negative pressure seal test to simulate inhalation. Again, the mask should slightly collapse with no air entering above, below, or from the side. Step 6. Put on goggles. These are anti-fogging goggles. Adjust the goggles so they're snug to your face. Remember that all facial PP adjustments must be done in the donning area and you need to refrain from making adjustments in the patient's room. Step 7. Pull the coverall hood over your head. Step 8. Pull the coverall zipper all the way to the top of the neck. Step 9. Pull away adhesive strip from the zipper cover and press down to cover the zipper. Step 10. Put on full face shield. The face shield worn has flaps on the sides to provide better coverage. As it is difficult to see for yourself, the observer will ensure that you have as much coverage as possible. Step 11. Put on second pair of nitrile gloves. The PP observer will assist the clinician with the donning of the second pair of gloves over the coverall sleeve. Step 12. The clinician will now complete a 360 degree turn for the PPE observer to perform a visual inspection of PPE integrity and fit. The clinician is now ready to enter the Ebola room.